Boeing and Airbus have dominated the commercial aviation sector for decades. But this might soon change because China's state-owned plane manufacturer has entered the race. The C919 jetliner is being presented to potential buyers, and it might break the duopoly of the Airbus A320 and Boeing 737 in the long run. So what exactly makes the C919 so special, and what could attract airlines to add it to their fleet? To understand, we have to delve into its parent company, Comac. China has been competing with the West in all possible fields for around two decades now, and it did not want to leave the arena of commercial aircraft manufacturing vacant either. This is why, after seeing that the Western manufacturers had been all over the aviation landscape, it decided to bring in its own aircraft manufacturing company. This led to the establishment of Comac. The Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, or Comac in short, is a Chinese state-owned commercial airliner producer headquartered in Shanghai. Established in 2008, Comac has manufactured two aircraft so far, the ARJ-21 and the C919. ARJ-21 is the smallest of the two and is a 78 to 97 seat regional aircraft. The narrowbody C919 can accommodate 158 to 192 passengers and has a range of 4,000 and 75 to 5,555 kilometers. While both of these jetliners might seem new to you, Comac has already secured 252 orders for the ARJ-21 and more than 1,000 orders for its C919 aircraft. In addition to this, the company is also developing a long-range wide-body aircraft, the C929, whose baseline version will have 280 seats and a range of 12,000 kilometers. So, what's the story of Comac's C919 aircraft? And why could it pose a threat to Airbus and Boeing in the long run? Although the Aviation Industry Corporation of China produces many of the parts for the C919, Western companies have also contributed significantly to the aircraft's development. The development of the C919 is the result of a 2011 agreement between Comac and the famous budget carrier Ryanair. Canada's Bombardier Aerospace also hopped on the collaboration bus in 2012 by assisting Comac in electrical systems, supply chain services, human interface, cockpit, flight training, flight test support, sales, and marketing. And the most important component of the C919 aircraft, its engine, comes from CFM International, a joint venture of General Electric and Safran. And this is where thing will get interesting, because the narrow-body airliner uses the Leap 1C engine. According to Reuters, the United States government considered blocking General Electric from selling Leap 1C in 2020, citing that China could reverse engineer the engine and use it to enhance its military technology as well as to compete with Boeing. However, GE was ultimately given the go-ahead after the erstwhile president tweeted that trade restrictions should not be forced, citing national security concerns. Now. Let us see what is so special about the Leap 1C engine. For starters, this engine is environment friendly compared to its peers. When it comes to fuel consumption and carbon emissions, the Leap 1C is a twin spool high bypass turbofan that is 15% more efficient than other Leap engine variants used in the Airbus A320neo and Boeing 737 MAX, which gives the C919 a huge advantage in comparison to its competitors. According to Wu Guanghu, the chief designer of the C919, the plane's fuel efficiency comes from its low resistance, which results in requiring less thrust during flights and saving fuel. Moreover, environmentally friendly materials were used during the development phase of the C919 plane. As for the resistance of the aircraft, the C919 has enhanced resistance ability against bird strikes and improved capability of dealing with emergency exits. Despite these cool features of Leap 1C, there was one problem which China was fully aware of. China knew that the US government could pull the plug on Leap 1C anytime it wanted. So, in 2009, Comac locally partnered with AVIC Commercial Aircraft Engine to develop a domestic alternative to the Leap engine, the CJ-1000A. But developing an alternative to the engine does not provide a long-lasting solution for China and Comac. This is because there are other Western contributors to different parts of the C919 aircraft as well. These include Honeywell, 
Collins Aerospace, GE Aviation, Hamilton Sunstrand, Liebherr, and Parker Aerospace. But despite having internationally recognized vendors for different components of the aircraft, the development of this narrow-body airliner did not happen without its fair share of disruptions. The C919's development program was launched in 2008, and Comac planned to have it ready for its maiden flight in 2014. But it hit several delays due to technical hindrances and supply problems, commercial flights of the Comac C-919 began only in May 2023 when Chinese airline flight MU-9191 departed Shanghai Hongqiao Airport for Beijing. Soon after its maiden flight, Comac announced that it had received an order C-919. Tibet Airlines has ordered 40 aircrafts from the high-altitude variant of the C-919 which will have strengthened landing gear for better shot field performance and a shortened fuselage. Another huge advantage of the C919 is its price point. At the time of release, a single C919 cost just around 99 million US dollar. And compared to the 111 million dollar list price for the A320neo and 121 million dollar for the 737 MAX 8, the C919 is comparatively affordable making it an attractive option for airlines and flight operators, but it's worth noting that operators typically negotiate prices below the list price. Now the question is, when exactly is the C919 going international? Well, the answer to this question isn't that simple. Comac has been manufacturing planes mainly for Chinese and Southeast Asian airlines. The C919 is currently only certified by the Chinese Civil Aviation Administration, which gave it the green light in September 2022, when China Eastern Airlines began flying it. But this might change soon, as evident from China's latest attempts to secure broader international recognition for the C919 jetliner. This is why Comac went on a promotional tour in East Asia, starting in Singapore, then going to Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, and Indonesia, and finally ending the tour in Malaysia. The purpose of this tour was to pitch the C919 to potential buyers as an alternative to the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320. Southeast Asian countries are expected to reach and, in the case of some countries, surpass the pre-COVID tourism levels. This means the demand for air travel to these countries will also rise. Chinese state media recently reported that Comac expects the demand for commercial airliners in the Asia-Pacific region to triple over the next 20 years, from 3,314 to 9,701 aircraft. However, China intends to pursue European Union Aviation Safety Agency certification as well for the narrow-body jet, a sign that it is setting the stage to take on both the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320. Moreover, Comac is planning to introduce both shortened and extended variants of the C919 aircraft in order to attract as many new buyers as possible. All these developments suggest that Comac fully intends to take the C919 to international skies. The Mercator Institute of China Studies suggested that certain factors might give the C919 an advantage over its competitors. The Airbus a320 and Boeing 737. These include the dominance of state-owned companies in the Chinese aviation sector, China's strong industrial policies, and the volume of its aviation market. Tensions between Beijing and Washington, which have greatly affected Boeing's business in China, are also proving a contributing factor in the rise of C919. Following two fatal crashes in Ethiopia and Indonesia, the Boeing 737 MAX was grounded in China in 2019 and did not come back into service until 2023. The manufacturers earn the most revenue from narrow-body aircraft, accounting for almost 60% of the total number of aircraft produced. However, Boeing has not been able to get as many orders for its 737 family in China as Comac has secured for the C919 aircraft. One of the reasons for this is that most of the orders to Comac have come from state-owned airlines and enterprises in China, which only makes sense since Comac itself is state-owned by China. Another big reason is its engine. Airlines prefer fuel-efficient engines because of the increasing fuel prices, and this is where C919 takes the prize. But, Despite a greater chance of getting replaced by the aircraft, 
Western manufacturers are unconcerned about being replaced by the C919. Although the CEO of Airbus's aircraft commercial business, Christian Scherer, acknowledged that the C919 was a legitimate effort by China, according to him, it is not going to rock the boat in particular. This is due to the C919's not very different design from its Airbus and Boeing counterparts. Dave Schulter, Boeing's commercial marketing managing director for Asia Pacific, also gave similar comments on the potential of the C919 to replace the A320 and 737 MAX. He said that only Southeast Asian airlines might consider adding C919s to their fleet, indicating that the aircraft does not have a broader international market like Airbus and Boeing. Schulte also warned of similar supply chain disruptions for Comac that Airbus and Boeing faced after COVID-19 was over. This is because of the heavy reliance of C919 on Western companies for its important components. Another reason why the C919 might not be the go-to option for international airlines is to avoid complicating their management, operations, and maintenance systems, which can increase the overall cost of flying these narrow-body commercial aircraft. The international aviation market requires an aircraft manufacturer to have a widespread and effective technical support and training system. Comac is yet to erect such a system on a larger scale, making C919 an unattractive option for the airlines. But that's not the only difficulty for COMAX C919, as the aircraft faces several challenges in market penetration. Key among these are regulatory hurdles. It needs global certifications, with approvals from authorities like the Federal Aviation Administration and European Union Aviation Safety Agency being crucial and geopolitical tensions may also hinder its acceptance in Western markets. Additionally, the rapid evolution of the aviation industry particularly towards sustainability, puts pressure on the C919. Airbus and Boeing's heavy investment in more fuel-efficient and environmentally friendly technologies highlights the need for Comac to innovate continually and building a reputation comparable to established brands like Airbus and Boeing is a significant challenge for Comac, as brand perception and value are vital in this industry. Now, the main question we have all been waiting to find the answer to is, can the COMAC actually dethrone Boeing and Airbus? Well, a number of factors and stakeholders are involved, one of the major factors being global politics. In the early 2000s, Western countries were in favor of trade with China, which they thought could become nothing more than a consumer market to sell their goods and services. During this time, both Airbus and Boeing sold hundreds of their commercial aircraft to China, whose economy was on a continuous rise. This is exactly why big Western companies agreed to supply major components for the C919 when Comac announced its development. However, global politics has changed a lot in recent years. The trade war between the US and China, which started in 2018 during Donald Trump's presidency, has only gotten tense over the last six years. And because it is a close ally of the United States, Europe isn't friendly towards China either. The US has many sanctions on China, and European countries have also tightened their export controls and policies regarding outbound investment in China. These steps are being taken to reduce dependency on China and will disrupt Western companies' supply of different C919 components to COMAC. Such developments also mean that the C919 commercial aircraft will not be allowed to fly free in international skies and will have greater restrictions on its export to Western airlines. This is likely to force China to rely heavily on domestically produced parts for the mass production of the C919 aircraft. It will certainly enable narrow-body aircraft to take a bigger share of the domestic aviation market. However, rising tensions between China and the West will also influence C919's position in the global aviation landscape and it might forever be confined to China and some East Asian countries only. Airbus and Boeing's most recent analyses back up this claim. Both of the leading commercial aircraft manufacturers predict strong growth in the Chinese aviation market, indicating that they are unconcerned about the hype surrounding the C919. 
In its 2023 global market forecast, Airbus predicted an annual growth rate of 5.3% for China's domestic airlines and a requirement for 9,440 new commercial narrowbody and widebody aircraft. Boeing has also predicted in its 2023 to 2042 commercial market outlook that by 2042, China will account for 18% of the total global air passenger traffic. Boeing's report says that Chinese airlines will operate more than 9,000 aircraft by 2042, indicating that the C919 and similar domestic aircraft will be seen flying frequently in Chinese skies. However, this aircraft still needs to achieve a lot if it really wants to compete with the big boys of the commercial aircraft manufacturer industry. Two of the foremost hurdles include overcoming its supply chain issues, as it imports many components from Western companies, and securing certification from the European Union Aviation Safety Agency. COMAC's tagline at the Singapore Air Show read, a reliable new choice, but only time will tell whether it is reliable or not, and whether it can take over Boeing and Airbus. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time.